In the past, when I flirted with standards-based grading, I felt like it was missing a dimension. I found that missing dimension with this data gathering framework in the Building Thinking Classrooms book. In this framework, students are given a page or a two-page spread like this one at the beginning of the unit. This is their GPS, their navigational tool. Along the left-hand side, the curriculum expectations are written in that teacher-friendly language, which you know it's never written in student-friendly language. So we take those curriculum expectations and we translate those for students into three complexity levels, basically showing the student what an understanding of this curriculum expectation would look like at a basic level, an intermediate level, and an advanced level. And this way, students can very clearly see where they are and where they would like to go. So for example, here, there's an expectation about um, describe the observational and theoretical evidence relating to the origin and evolution of the universe. Students may not understand what that means, but I can translate that into a basic understanding or a basic complexity level. At the basic level, that just means state the Big Bang Theory. At an intermediate level, that means explain the evolution of the early universe. And at an advanced level, that means explain the evidence of the Big Bang Theory, like the cosmological redshift, the cosmic microwave background, and the relative abundance of elements. So it gives students an idea of where they are in their learning, and it tells them where they need to go in their learning. Grades are tied to the complexity levels. So for an example, if a student was able to only show a basic understanding, they would receive a score of two out of four. That's a passing score. If they were able to show an intermediate understanding, they would score a three out of four or 75%. And if they were able to show an advanced understanding of that curriculum expectation, they would receive a four out of four or 100% on that curriculum expectation. What I love about implementing this in my classroom is that students know exactly where they stand and they know exactly what to improve upon to get where they want to go. Again, it's like a GPS system. Here is my heavily annotated data gathering framework. With this, let me walk you through it. We still have the curriculum expectations along the left side of each page. And then we've translated those curriculum expectations for the students into basic, intermediate, and advanced complexity levels and language that's friendly for students. Students can read that and understand what we're talking about. What you'll notice here is that if there is an expectation that doesn't have, let's say, an advanced complexity level, it's no longer out of four, it's now out of three. So that way students can perform 100% by getting three out of three by matching or meeting the intermediate complexity level. What I love about this when I'm working on this with students is that I can see a snapshot of the student. So I'm not looking at a snapshot of a test or a quiz or an assignment. I'm looking holistically at the student. It's a big mind shift in terms of grading. And honestly, I love it because it's more personalized for their education. The other thing is that students get to see this too. So they can pinpoint exactly what they need some help on. And if they have the opportunity to do, let's say a quiz retake, they don't have to retake every single question. You can give them questions that are catered to the curriculum expectations that they're struggling with without repeating more assessment on what they're already good at. It's time to move on from what they're already good at. The Building Thinking Classroom research shows that two check marks in any of these cells is sufficient. That's sufficient evidence that students have shown their learning. And this is based off of 15 years of research, so I'm trusting it, and I find that it works in my classroom too. So check mark means that a student has shown their understanding, but sometimes students make a silly mistake or they need some more support or stronger support. So we give them an S, meaning they're almost there. Sometimes students need help or sometimes they do this activity with a group. Now, if students are struggling, this is really wonderful to show their growth as well. Let's say, for example, here we had a student who would not attempt a question related to this curriculum expectation at the advanced level. 
and then a second opportunity was given. They attempted it, but they didn't get it right. A third opportunity was given and they needed some help. But here's where the growth happens. Because these opportunities keep coming up, students are more willing to keep trying, knowing that their previous work can be sort of erased when they show that they have learned it. They don't need to necessarily show it right away. So this student can still achieve the four out of four 100% on this curriculum expectation because they've shown their growth. And isn't that honestly really beautiful? I love that about this. Another facet of this is that it informs our own teaching. So if you look at the bottom expectation here, this teacher has identified six different opportunities to assess this basic understanding, this basic complexity level. Don't you think they should move on? And when we look over here at the intermediate and the advanced level, they've only provided one. So this informs our own teaching and it gives us a visual representation of when we need to move on from basic understanding into intermediate and advanced understanding and to give students lots of opportunities at all levels. So even if students are able to only show their basic understanding, they still pass that unit and students can improve their understanding by going for more of the advanced complexity levels.